Hello, good morning everyone. I trust you are feeling great this morning. Fresh, fresh new mercies. We get to rejoice in the day that the Lord has made. We get to have more of His grace, which is enough for us, which is sufficient for us. And that's something that's actually been on my mind for a couple of days now. I don't know how many of you have seen that Chosen series. I love this series. It's For me, it's really something that's truly phenomenal in the way they portray things. Even the fillers that they use that the Bible doesn't completely describe, but to help the flow of the process, which they say that they do. But there's an for me there's like an unbelievable anointing on this series because the amount of emotion that I've endured watching this and the one particular scene that's actually been on my mind which is why I'm bringing it up it's been on my mind for a couple of days now and then I got to share about this yesterday and then I thought okay that was it and then it's still last night and still this morning it's still hanging around and even with that a few other messages from other pastors and people that I've seen speaking of kind of different things but kind of the same thing and then God just brings it all together for me this morning and last night and I'm you know as I'm sitting here this morning just getting ready everything's just coming together you know and it really just comes about God's grace and then I'm sitting I'm going Lord what what scripture actually fits nicely for me with this and immediately I just hop straight we go straight to Paul 2nd Corinthians chapter 12 verse 10 where where Paul says I will rejoice in my infirmities you know, it's about a vision Paul had and a thorn that he got that feels like it was meant to make sure he keeps humble so he doesn't boast in what he does for Jesus. You know, and then and, and says from verse 18 in chapter 12, he says, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, my, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And then he says, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. And then verse 10, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weakness, my insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Why? Because when you aren't strong, you can't fight God. He comes in and he can have his way if we allow him to. But he can also step in. If you run to the end of your strength with what you are busy doing, you can then well not you can you naturally then kind of get out of god's way because you can't go any further and what's left which was already god's job anyway god can step in and freely do what he said he will do and then i saw a video last night which was which was pretty cool about where a, where we have this message and then pastors and stuff preach these messages about what Jesus can do for you, what God can do for you and will do for you. If you obey his law, if you obey his commandments, if you follow him, if you, you know, when, when the basic core of everything just needs to be remembered that Jesus already did everything for you. He gave us a chance to go to heaven, to be with our father. That's the core of this, that it should be enough grace period not grace and stuff grace and my healing grace and my riches grace and my honor grace and my big business grace and grace and grace and grace period full stop stop on jesus in himself is enough being able to love god is enough you know i i've many a places i've come that i that i kind of question and I kind of ask you know why do we what do we do to get we need to do to do do just because you know that's the heart or the servant heart you don't serve to get stuff God will reward you anyway we know this but are we doing it for the reward or are we doing it because we love Jesus and we love God so this particular scene that I'm referring to in this chosen is where they call him Little James. There's many names for him through all the translations. James the Less, James the Just, etc., etc. James the son of Alphaeus. In the scene, he comes to Jesus and he questions the fact that Jesus sends him out because he had a physical disability, some form of illness. And I tried to look in the Word this morning and I couldn't find something particular that describes exactly what he had. It probably is somewhere. But where he questions 
Jesus and he just says, you know what, you're sending me out to heal these people. You say we've got we've been given the ability to heal people and raise people from the dead and heal the lame and heal the sick. Cast out demons, yet you haven't healed me. And then there's this conversation about Jesus asking, would you like to be healed? And you'd know. And, and James saying, you know, I know you can. I know if you wanted to, yes, you can. No problem. And what was it so great for me in this scene, so beautiful for me saying, you know, but he says, you know, I think Jesus actually said, you see, you've seen more than enough people of, of healing, of me healing to know that it is possible. And there are so many good stories that people can tell about that. But that's, that's exactly what they are, good stories. And then he paints this picture that is so beautiful for me and it really gripped me this morning as well, going, you know, despite, and where Paul comes in, despite of my weaknesses, my infirmities, my illnesses, I will rejoice in it because God's grace is sufficient and God's power is made perfect in weakness. So he'll, he'll send, he sent out and he said, can you imagine you walk in this beautiful story with your illness, you, despite you not being healed, you still stand strong for God, strong for Jesus, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, whatever the, the instruction is that God still gives you to do, not paying mind to the issue you may have, the issue you may face, the challenge you are in, the trial you are in, the shortcomings you have. The difficult situations in your life right now, yet still you stand up and help that other person. You still follow God's instruction. You do what He tells you to do, what He asks you to do. Knowing that, you know, the thing is, what we tend to forget, I think, in these times, is that this earth is still a temporary spot. And permanent healing will be given in heaven anyway. So this few years that we need to deal with whatever physical stuff. Remember, the physical stuff doesn't, I still believe it doesn't come from God because it's a, not a good thing. I mean, even in the terms of Job, where Jesus also refers to in this scene that he said, you know, he refers to Job, where Job said, God gives and God takes away. But I still think that illnesses don't necessarily overcome people because of what God does. I don't think God wants that for us. But God produces chances to learn lessons out of everything the enemy attacks us non-stop why do kids or babies or children at a young age why do they get sick and why do they die especially stuff like cancer which we see as massive stuff why does this happen i don't know why do people die before their time i don't know but who are we to say it's before their time anyway it might have been the exact time that god ended up planning for them who knows i don't know these things I really don't, and so far I haven't found answers in the Bible, but one thing that came, comes to my mind in this instance again is, you know, God never asks us to understand Him and understand what He's doing and understand what He's telling us to do. He's asking us to trust Him, to have faith in Him, to follow His instruction and do what He wants to do. You know, if, if we can reach that sort of level of faith just in His grace being enough, that Jesus already did, he gave us everything, he did everything for us already, by dying when we weren't even here yet, but when we get when we heard of it for the first time, and, and yet still we aren't even worthy of it, yet he did it for us anyway, because he loves us, that's a different kind of love, my friends, you know, and I'm lying there in bed last night thinking about all this, and then all of a sudden this lady pops up who's been bleeding for 12 years, and all she wanted to do, she convinced herself just touching the garment of Jesus would heal her. That this caused a bit of a ruckus between everybody because Jesus stopped and he felt the power leave him because of the faith of this woman. That she said, I will just touch him and I will be healed. And she touched him and she was healed. It was enough. She got her healing. Maybe James didn't. The point is not whether you can or can't or are you deserve it of or aren't deserving of healing. It's not about that. That's the thing that we tend to miss a lot. It's about the grace of God being enough, sufficient by itself, not grace and extras, grace and healing, grace and. It's just grace, full stop, claw, nedo. You know, to not serve God, to get His promises. To serve God, to serve God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I hope you're getting it this morning. I hope my message is coming through the way. At Fulomi Banaman. God's grace is enough for us, my friend. Learn to serve God, to serve God. Learn to rejoice in your infirmities. God's grace is sufficient for you.